Hi, I'm Tanya Winders, the current CEO and President of Allergy and Asthma Network and the current President of Global Allergy Airways Patient Platform, GAP. It's my pleasure to welcome you to this edition of GAP Academy, where we'll be talking about how to build a case for support. I want to once again thank the generous support of our sponsors of GAP Academy, AstraZeneca, Sanofi Genzyme, Regeneron, and Novartis. Now let's get started on how to build an effective case for support. In our time together today, we'll look at first, what is a case of, for support? Secondly, how do we tell the compelling story that's needed to raise funds? Then we'll look at what we do and why we do it, building that case for support through telling those stories effectively. Next, we'll talk about including effective case studies and the importance of those real life experiences of the lives impacted by our work. Finally, we'll discuss unmet needs and how individuals can get involved in helping and giving to your cause. And that really is the ask of the case for support. Then in conclusion, we'll take time to recognize key staff in the case for support and to provide you some additional resources to help as you build out your own case for support. Then we'll wrap up our time with Q&A. Money makes the world go round. That's an old saying that many of us have heard. And the truth is, as a nonprofit, we work diligently to not be focused on the bottom line. And yet money is vital to fueling our mission, to fueling the work that fulfills the vision of our organizations. So what is a case for support and how is it used to help gain the resources and the finances to achieve your mission? A case for support is a foundational document which shares exactly what you do as an organization, why you do it, and outlines how other people and organizations can get involved to support that work. The bottom line question for a case support for support is why should I give to this organization or cause? And as always, we'll talk about leading with the heart, creating that emotion. But it is what causes each of us to individually open our wallets and collectively what causes organizations and other sponsors to support the work we do. So how are we going to tell that story? Remember, stories stick, facts fade. So as you begin to tell your case for support, it should start with an emotional appeal. And I always say it's the heart of the matter. How do you create a strong emotional lead and share the difference that your organization makes in the lives of real people? It's not about the numbers and the statistics and, and the the just the sheer numbers that that will drive someone to open their wallet and to give to your organization or open their organizational budget and dedicate it to the work that you're doing. It takes building in that emotional appeal and sharing the difference that your organization makes in the lives of real people. So starting with that in mind and telling that story in a compelling and then fulfilling the obligation of what we do and why we do it as an organization. We always say start with why. People care more about the why you do what you do than the what that you do. Start with the why behind the what and provide that basis of understanding of the history of the organization the background about the organization that really does convey to the donor or to potential donor the credibility that your organization brings. So 
does it have that tradition of fulfillment of the mission? Have you been a good steward of the resources that you've been given to date? Do you have previous success stories that you can share? And what is the positive impact that you've already had on your community? By listing out some of your key programs or information um, on what you would do with those capital campaign dollars, it really helps to, for the donor to understand the difference that their contribution will make. You always need to include your mission, vision, and values, and certainly outline shared community needs that we'll talk about more in just a moment. What is there, the evidence that's out there that really will reinforce that there's a cause that has a pressing need that you need this person or this organization to step up and help you fulfill? And then how are you proposing to overcome that obstacle? to address that pressing need. What is your plan? And making sure that your case for support gives enough detail to that, that it, it really elicits someone to take the next step and move forward with giving their, their time, money, and resources. So this quote is, is one that means something uh, you know, meaningful around a uh, case for support because there's really no substitute for real experience. And we've, when we've all had those shared lived experiences, it builds a foundation of trust and, and certainly relationship. But if you don't have that real experience, what if you're trying to launch a new program or project, hearing stories um, can actually put that action in, in front of the, the person and, and helps to build that connection to the program. So using previous case studies, um, a valuable way to share those impact stories. St smaller stories are better. So very brief, you know, find a way to say it in the fewest words possible in the most simplistic way. Include uh, quotes directly from real lives that have been changed, real people that um, have been impacted by your organization's work. And then pictures are worth a thousand words. So find a powerful image to put into your case for support. Choose those images very wisely. Thinking about diversity and inclusion, thinking about the way that this relates to the work that you're doing overall. And then infographics can be a powerful way in a case for support to summarize some of the data and statistics. So again, how many people have you engaged? How many impressions have you made through your social channels? Um, how many lives have been changed through the work that you've done? What is the burden and the prevalence of the condition or the disease that you're representing? There are many different ways that you could either do that through an infographic or take paragraphs upon paragraphs to tell that story. So think about, is there a way to represent this text in a more visually appealing, concise way? And then finally, video. Um, I've got a couple of examples here at the conclusion of today's program that really um, are very valuable cases for support and that certainly reinforce that through the use of print materials, but also of video materials. And especially in 2021 and beyond, the use of video um, is, is a powerful way to hear directly from lives that have been impacted through your organization and the cause that you serve. So in building that case for support, one of the key elements is unmet needs. And uh, this quote says, unmet needs are blinders that keep you from seeing the good in life. And when someone is living in truly a, an, a situation of not having their healthcare needs met or not having their basic needs met, um, then definitely it's difficult to move up that Maslow's hierarchy of needs and move towards that self-actualization, that uh, living out your God-given potential that we all look to do ultimately. And so it's important to really 
uh, express in a case for support what are those unmet needs and how your organization is recognizing them and addressing them through your programs. So include that brief overview of the project that you'd like funded. Clearly state the goal, how you would use those contributions, what are the opportunities for other philanthropic support even beyond funding and money, but what overall community or societal needs will you address with the project? How does that project create value for the people that you serve? And then explain the flow of resources into your organization and the difference that that philanthropy makes to um, the world and, and to the society, but especially to your community. In a case for support, it's always important to have a specific ask. So we all know that it's better to give than to receive, and, and this quote is, in giving, we actually receive. So offering, by this time in your case for support, offering ways that that person can get involved and can help to fulfill the mission really is giving back to them and feeding their soul and their need for giving. So the questions that we pose in preparing the case for support this section is, why do we deserve your support? Share why you're uniquely qualified to tackle this need. Uh, what is your niche in the community? And, and how has your history of your organization supported that community? Make this clear. Share how you've changed things for the better and connect your strategic plan and goals to this particular project or work that you're seeking the support on. And then, of course, as time goes on, the importance of reporting back those goals and objectives, the success and challenge. This is how you create that continuous donor relationship where you ask for their help and then you tell them how their contribution actually made a difference. And, and that continues and provides a second opportunity for an additional ask. Um, so when thinking about what you're asking of the donor, you can clearly list all the ways that donors could get involved, involved and support your cause. Yes, money is a key factor, and most of the time a case for support is directly related to a monetary ask. But there could be other things, and there could certainly be specific patterns or ways to give that are not a huge dollar amount up front. So what are some of those? It could be a monthly or subscription giving model. It could be attending a fundraising event or donating an item. Um, it could be raising money yourself doing sort of crowdfunding um, or perhaps volunteering for the organization, giving of their skills and expertise and experience. Uh, certainly it could be that support for a capital campaign. If you've ever done a capital campaign, again, that's typically where you're asking for core mission dollars to either uh, get a building, uh, to hire more staff, to you know certainly have a significant expansion effort that is based on the core mission objectives of your organization. Next, we need to communicate the results or the anticipated results of giving. If you donate X dollars, this will help us achieve and share that. What will be the positive consequences of giving and what are the negative consequences if you don't raise the money, if you don't have that program? Don't be afraid to share that with your donors or think that they just automatically understand that and know that. Uh, oftentimes they don't. And so paint the picture of if you step in the gap, if you choose to help support this program, here's the difference, the consequences that will will incur. If you don't, here are the negative consequences that could occur. And painting that dichotomy, that difference between the good and the bad, the positive and the negative, uh, oftentimes is the reason why people go on to give.
So at the end of our case for support, we want to point out that we're not doing this as an island. Uh, we're not doing this alone. So one key way to do that is to share key contacts. Um, this quote of working together is success. Nothing is ever accomplished by one person. So how can you perhaps provide the brief bios of two or three of the key contacts that will be working on the project or driving the results of the work that you're doing? Um, these are all important ways to kind of reinforce that this work is important, that you have a team behind you, and that the ask that you're requesting of this individual or this organization is going to be fulfilled not by you alone, but by uh, the key contacts within your organization to carry the work forward. Imitation is the greatest form of flattery. So, you know, sometimes I say don't recreate the wheel, and this is another section of just really valuable, helpful resources when building out your case for support documents. Now, at Allergy and Asthma Network, I actually build out case for support for the organization overall. Um, so it's a document that, that does kind of give an overview of all of our mission areas and the key projects and work each year. And then I build out case for support documents for each of our major projects each year. And so again, if you're ever looking for a sample, I'll be happy to provide those. Um, included some additional helpful resources here. One is a link to an organization, um, the nonprofit fundraising organization that has this fundraising channel and they have a series of what's called money maker videos. And they explore different sources of funding and how you may need to tailor your case for support based off of the funder that you're going after. So if that is a community organization, if it's a nonprofit, a family foundation, if it's an individual donor, you'll need to tailor your approach just slightly based off of who that target audience is. And so these moneymaker videos really are helpful in understanding how to do that. Next, uh, we have two different case for support checklists that are valuable tools to help you check off each sort of section of a case for support and think through the questions that need to be answered and how you can write a case for support that's most impactful and powerful. Um, and we'll get the results that you want. And then there is a PDF that we'll share in conjunction with, as a resource with uh, today's webinar, and it's a guide to writing your case. And so once again, it takes you step by step through what I've shared in this webinar and will give you um, a, a structure and some templates to follow in writing your own case for support. I also included a few very valuable examples. As I said before, um, these are in print and in video. And, and just uh, again, one is the Habitat for Human. Humanity Organization, one is the YMCA of Calgary, but I think they are both uh, powerful ways of demonstrating how an effective case for support can uh, really just tell your story for you and keep building in those opportunities to secure additional funding and resource. And then finally, um, I, I did give the link here for sumac.com. They have several assets on that case for support checklist PDF and uh, the wealth engine case for support checklist. And so uh, again, those are just really great resources to add when you're beginning to work on a new case for support. So once again, I hope you've enjoyed this session of GAP Academy on building a case for support. Uh, we certainly, again, want to thank the generous support from our sponsors, AstraZeneca, Novartis, Santa Fe Genzyme, and Regeneron. And definitely want to thank the team at GAP for continuing to host GAP Academy and to help build capacity for the 60 plus organizations that make up the global allergy and airways patient platform. I'm Tanya Winders and hope you have a wonderful day. Thank you for attending.